Well, hey guys, I've been up for a bit. I went for a little walk. Now I'm getting ready. My hair is all over the place. So I'm going to buckle it up. The reason I do this is because the humidity here, it really does a number on my hair. Like my hair only stays cooperative for like 15 minute increments. Kind of goes all over the place. Although I have to say this, is my saving grace. This Moroccan oil hydrating styling cream, it really keeps it pretty tame. I try and keep my ponytail loose though. I try to not pull it too tight because otherwise you put a lot of traction on the hair that can lead to traction alopecia. Likewise, when I buckle it in, as I say, I do a, a pretty loose bun up here. I don't do it too tight. And then these clamps, I just do around the hair. I don't like dig in and try and get it real tight. I just do it pretty loose and gentle right there. It's like a little cinnamon bun sitting on my head. Real gentle. And I never sleep with my hair up in any kind of clips or anything. Like at night, I put my hair up in clips after I get all the water out of it. That way it's not hanging in my face while I do other work on my computer. Right before I get in the bed to go to sleep, I take my hair out of the clips. My hair is completely dry at that point. So I use a hairband in the morning to get my, the little wispies out of the way for doing my skincare, but I don't wear this like all day. These kind of things, they can put a little bit of pressure and tension, traction on the hair and contribute to breakage. But definitely if you're dealing with thinning along the hairline from traction, these are little, little pearls, tips, things to avoid. I'm gonna use my Hydro Boost Hydrating Gel Cleanser. I've been seeing some questions about azelaic acid. Some people want to know, like, is it okay to use product X with azelaic acid in the morning and product Y with azelaic oops, acid in the evening? I suggest just sticking with one azelaic acid product. Prescription 15 and 20% azelaic acid. That's where the research for benefit is. And I say prescription, it's prescription here in the US, but other countries you can buy those drinks over the counter. If you've been prescribed that, use it as prescribed by your dermatologist. And I wouldn't go out of my way to introduce another azelaic acid. Now, if you're buying an over-the-counter azelaic acid at a weaker strength, I would just stick to one product with azelaic acid. Having multiple ones, I don't really think offers much. I mean, you certainly can do one brand's azelaic acid in the evening and another brand's in the morning if you wanted to. I would just stick with one. And one thing about azelaic acid, it's actually a difficult ingredient to formulate, to, to work into formula is my understanding. Like it's kind of gritty and grainy. Several years ago, like when I first started on YouTube, azelaic acid was not super common. Like the ordinary, I wanna say was one of the first companies to come out with an azelaic acid. And I was like, like, is this even effective? I think when I reviewed it at the time, I was highly skeptical because it just seemed odd. Like I'd really never encountered azelaic acid in the over the counter um, you know, in the, in the cosmetic market. It's, it's not an, it's not an over-the-counter medication here in the U.S. as a lake acid. It should be. I, I wholeheartedly believe it should be, but it's not. So when they came out with that, if you go back in time, the first days of my channel when I reviewed some of the, some of the OG ordinary products, God, <laughs> um, I was like very skeptical, skeptical because I just never, never come across as a lake acid. And then, you know, as it became a little bit more common to find it and, and a lot more brands started introducing it, you do see people are benefiting from it in those weaker strengths. Uh, hard to say how good it is in comparison to the prescription stuff, but I, you know, I do think it gives people a lot of benefit for things like redness, hyperpigmentation, even some acne control. All that to say, I do know that it's a tricky ingredient to work with. So you might get a product that you don't care for, you don't see results with, and it could just be the formula overall, which is the crummy thing about cosmetics, you know, is that there's nothing that really predicts if it's gonna work or not, you know, if it's if it's gonna be effective or not. I have to say though, the Polish Choice Azelaic Acid Booster is, is a good one. I've heard some by me has an azelaic acid that's supposed to be good. Comment below and if you use that. I'm mean, gonna need to try that at some point. And I wanna try the peach slices that came out with the azelaic acid line. I really wanna try that because I feel like it's a very valuable ingredient. I think they should just make it the prescription stuff like Phenacia. I think it should just be an over the counter. And as a matter of fact, I'm shocked that they didn't make that over the counter before they did a dappling different. I mean, not that different isn't safe and you know, pretty user-friendly overall. But azelaic acid is a lot more user-friendly 
And it's got a, it's a, a lot more multifunctional. Hyperpigmentation, acne, redness, safe to use in pregnancy. You don't run into the issue of antimicrobial resistance with it. I mean, it's just like, to me, it's like, why, why are we... Why are we holding back on that one? Anyway, y'all's battery is about to die. With azelaic acid, it's, it's generally pretty well tolerated, although it can be drying. But it's compatible with other ingredients. Don't overthink like the routine of using it, you know, layering it with X, Y, and Z. The, the main issue with introducing multiple products together is like, sometimes the formulas don't align and you get that killing issue. But seriously, if you are trying azelaic acid, just give it some time to like work for you. I think that's one of the most difficult things about skincare is like being patient enough, giving it time to actually work. There was a recent study actually on people with psoriasis and like people with psoriasis, man, they, they have so many topicals that they end up getting prescribed and have to keep up with and it's a pain for them and like so they did a study you know a survey or whatever um turns out people will use something for about a week um before bailing if they if, they, if they're not motivated to use it and i think that's true by and large so keep that in mind like when if you're tempted to buy skincare like say am i really gonna gonna keep using this for the next three months every single day? Or am I gonna use it a few times and get sick of it and move on? Because skincare products, if you just use them, you know, a few here and there, it's, it's the rarity that a skincare product is really gonna offer you much using it for a limited time. That's not always the case, you know, like, I don't use the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm every single day. I rarely use it, but when I need it, it really helps. It doesn't help that the skincare industry is constantly coming out with new and exciting stuff. But yeah, I mean, just really ask yourself, like, is this something that I need? Is this going to solve a problem for me? Or is it going to create a problem for me? Am I going to actually keep using it? Take a step back and think of the grand, greater timeline of life. Oh shoot, I almost forgot to put the timer on. Update on the Ninja, still going strong. I've been pleased as punch with this. I'll have to set you guys down because I can't do this with one hand. There we go. Yeah, I really like it. And it's easy to, easier to clean like the base. I find wiping it down, it actually looks clean. My blunt tech always looked like, I don't know, it was, it belonged in a auto shop or something. I'm here in Walmart and they have this circle. This is kind of interesting. It's a water bottle flavoring system. That's, I don't know, it seems kind of a gimmick to me because it's basically, you know, like the water flavor enhancers, sort of like Mio's or whatever. But it's this gadget that you buy that goes on top of this bottle. And I guess you dial in the flavor into the water and then you can sip out of this. It flavors the equivalent of six 20 ounce bottles. But I mean, I don't understand why you would need all of this when they make the little flavor enhancers that you can buy and squeeze in. You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, it seems like kind of overkill, but I don't think I've ever seen a Honeycrisp apple flavor of the water enhancers. I don't really use those because I honestly like plain water. I mean, I like water, flavored water too, but I, I genuinely enjoy plain water. <laughs> and I think I'm, I'm starting to think I'm somewhat of an anomaly. Comment below and if you just like plain water, especially if I'm actually thirsty, like really thirsty, I would much rather have plain water than like the flavored water. Cause I find it kind of, I don't know, some of these water flavors, they kind of, let me know if you feel this way, but they kind of coat your mouth. Fit sip, life sip and go sip. I wonder what the difference between them is. Oh, one of them has caffeine. Drew Barrymore has really expanded her Walmart line. She's got all sorts of utensils here. I don't know. Seems like you're paying for the Drew Barrymore branding as with any celebrity, what have you. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this is an, an American thing, the obsession with water, like flavored water, drinking water. Is it just me? I mean, I love water. I drink a lot of it, but I feel like there's like a whole industry here in this country of like, water drinking like you'd think we were all like 
desiccated or something. It's like, we all have polydipsia. That's cute. I wonder if it actually works. Noodle cooker and skillet. I'm a sucker for these little mini cooking get gizmos. Like those uh, waffle makers. I always have to resist the urge because I've had several of them and I don't have the patience to wait for the waffle. A little mini toaster for a single slice of toast. Um, all right. Some cute aprons here. Looks like Walmart has relocated the baby skincare over here to this kind of quiet section. And it seems as though they've started, it looks as though they've started carrying the pipette skincare. I reviewed this a few years ago when it came out, like the mineral sunscreen. It's actually not bad, um, kind of casty, but not too bad. Man, it has gone up in price, if I'm remembering correctly. The lotion was so-so. Um, I can't remember if I tried this, um, but yeah, this stuff was okay. What is this Vivian and Bloom two-in-one scalp and body massage oil? This is just sun scented sunflower seed oil and coconut oil. Two-in-one face and body whip lotion? Y'all know I'm a huge fan of two-in-one. Ooh, and this is fragrance-free. Hmm. I like it when they're moisturizers that can be used on face and body effectively and then it's marketed that way. $9.98. Here is a two-in-one wash and shampoo cleansing gel. Also free of fragrance. Man, this Vivian Bloom line is looking exciting. Face and body whip lotion. I wonder what the difference... Oh, this one must be scented. The green ones must be scented. Am I right on that? Yeah. Baby Dove has a baby oil. Rapeseed oil, it's just canola, it's canola oil, coconut oil. This one does not appear to have fragrance. Sensitive skincare hypoallergenic cream. Hypoallergenic is kind of a marketing term. I have a video explaining why. This one's scented. They also have these little gift sets <clears throat> from Baby Dove. That's cute to take to a baby shower. Oh, with a little sponge. That's sweet. The lotion is scented, but the tip to toe, yeah, the tip to toe wash is scented too. They have a tip to toe wash that's fragrance free. Ball mix. This is good as a diaper rash cream, zinc oxide. It's also good in the skin folds if you um, are prone to like uh, chafing. Ball mix is quite good. Baby skincare. Don't sleep on baby skincare because you'll find some goodies in that section and oftentimes it's a good deal. Sometimes it's not. Sign. I'm on my way to the library because it's been a hot minute since I've been to the library. The library is on another level of excitement and entertainment in the summer months, especially like, you know, because school is going to be letting out soon if it isn't already. Um, and so it's like, woohoo, summer reading and, you know, like the incentives to read at the library. I always, I, I don't know. I mean, like, obviously I am too old for that, but I get the biggest kick out of it and it brings me a lot of joy seeing the summer reading, like, stuff. I don't know. I love, I love, library. I love my drinks, right? Like coffee, tea, I, I almost always have a beverage. Um, and I love flavored waters. I love the water enhancers, but I also genuinely love plain water. And I can drink plain water no problem. Like in a restaurant, I don't need to jazz it up. Sometimes I do like jazzing it up. I don't know, I go back and forth, but I definitely can drink plain water and not be mad about it. Um, and sometimes I prefer it. Like I find that it is, it does the job, it, it does a better job when you're actually thirsty, which the trick is to not let yourself get thirsty. Like once you're, once you feel thirst, you're already kind of, the tank is running on empty uh, as far as hydration. So I try, I try and stay on top of my water drinking, but it's not difficult for me to get in the volume of water that's recommended. Plus I eat a lot of hydrating food. So there's that, you know, food counts. All right, we're here at the library. Stephen King, Dark Tower, Marvel book. Huh. I enjoy Stephen King, but I'm not one to have these like, what are these called? I forget, graphic, graphic novels, I don't know. But there's a new Stephen King movie coming out this summer and I kind of want to see it. <laughs> At least the coming attractions look good, which it's been a long time since a movie has looked like it would be good. 
never too late, never too early to get in the Christmas spirit. For Halloween decorations. I never decorate for Halloween, but it's such a fun little day of the year. For the past like year, year and a half, I've really gotten into nonfiction, which I used to not really vibe with at all. I don't know. Um, Havana before Castro. The White Mosque. just hopped out of the shower. I'm all moisturized and prior to taking my shower, I had to, has this ever happened to you if you've got a um, Apple computer, like your hard drive suddenly needs to be like purged on the computer, not your actual like external one? I have to do that from time to time because of all of the video files that I have floating around and it always freaks me out because I'll be trying to do something and then it's like, you must do it. Like, and I, I kind of scramble to find where I need to go in the folders to delete stuff. And it always happens at like the most inconvenient time. <laughs> I feel like a prisoner to Apple. They just kind of decide arbitrarily things that like seriously impact our lives. Uh, uh, everybody, regardless if you use Apple or not, I feel like, you know, they just like willy nilly decide things and a lot of people use Apple products and it impacts a lot of systems. And like, for example, when they just decided to change up the cord plug thing and or like when you buy a phone now, the charging port is not gonna be the same as another person's charging if they have an older model. It's just, I mean, all these little things they build in to keep you, to keep you giving them money. It's, it's absurd. Like I started using, Apple computers when I was, geez, I guess when I was a, when I was a grad student, when I was in graduate school, that's when I got my first Apple computer. And I needed it at the time because like the software that I was using in the lab required, it only would run in a Mac. I needed this special software and so I had to have a Mac to run it. And so I started using them then and like I've just stuck with them ever since. Prior to that, I think I was using like a Compaq, C-O-M-P-A-Q, and that thing, man, I, I don't know, I guess I, I ended up, you know, you can <clears throat> turn in your computer or recycle it or whatever. I'm pretty sure I did that, but it would be fun to have that, bring that out and, and see what kind of a dinosaur it looks like. It's crazy just, you know, how antiquated these things become so quickly. But yeah, so that's really when I got into the Apple computer and at the time, my phone, I didn't have an iPhone. I don't know when I got my first iPhone. It was like probably four or five years later. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's like now I have, I don't do the earbuds. I've never done the Apple Watch. Oh, one product though that I got, I think I got it before the phone. I had, that's right, that's right. I'm, 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 I'm forgetting another another thing from the vault, the vault of antiquity. Before I ever had a laptop that was Apple, before I ever had an Apple computer, I had the iPod Touch. Do you guys remember that? To listen to music. And I got it and I was super excited about it. And I remember not liking it because I just felt like there was something about it that got on my nerves. Like it would just randomly not work it wouldn't play the songs in the right order and I didn't care for the interface. Like there was nothing, the original, like the iPod Touch Mini, I had one of those and I did not care for it. And then at the time, the earbuds, they would never stay in my ears properly. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I want the Walkman, <laughs> which is, you know, from definitely a land far, far away. But yeah, I used to have this Walkman. It was like waterproof, <laughs> allegedly. I never tried it out but it was this bright yellow Walkman and it had like, um, you know, the thing where you put the tape in and, and headphones. And I loved that thing because I would get books on tape from the library and listen to them in my Walkman. It was about, probably about this big, but honestly, you think that technology has advanced so much and yeah, obviously it has, but the iPhones are about like getting to be Walkman size. Am I right? Like they're getting to be 
as massive as, as a Walkman. But, but you see, at the time, I also had a cassette player in my car. So I'd either listen to the radio or I would listen to cassettes in the car. But since that time, radio has just not... It's, it's all ads, and they played like the same four or five songs. I mean, maybe it was always that way, and now we're just getting kind of spoiled by, by uh, social media. Um, but I recently, you guys, um, y'all told me about this, um, because I, like, probably almost, I feel like it was almost maybe six or seven months ago, I was talking about how I just don't really listen to music like I used to, because, you know, this issue with the radio, and one of you guys pointed out to me, I should have known this, that because I have Amazon Prime, you can listen to music on Amazon Prime. And I have been loving that. Loving that. So thank you for whoever recommended that to me. So I've been liking that. I don't really listen to podcasts. Sometimes I'll listen to, like, some of the medical journals have, like, a podcast that goes with them. I like listening to those. And one thing I really dislike about modern media platforms is I don't like being shown what to watch. I like to be able to, you know, go somewhere and know that I'm going to see X, Y, and Z. That's why I like YouTube so much. Like you can search for things that you want to see, and I like that. I don't see TikTok. I just don't care for the way that platform operates in terms of how it shows you stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, all I have to say, I have gone back into listening to music, and Apple... I feel like we're in a prison, an Apple prison. Like we're we're just sitting in that that store. Even like, have you ever had to go in the Apple store? Oh my gosh! I'll tell you one thing though. Now we're on the subject of Apple computers. When I was a resident, I had an Apple laptop. My water bottle leaked, destroyed the entire computer. That's another thing about them. They're so fragile. Like the tiniest drop of water, and it's gone, fried. To get the Apple store, they're like. Nothing we can do. Did you save it to the cloud? What the heck is the cloud anyway? I mean, I've had Apple computers for years now, and I'm still not confident in that cloud. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up here. I hope you're having a great weekend. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends as I fall off of the off of my bamboo mat. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.